Okay, this is the patch 10.13 patch rundown. This is our first balance patch after the uh, Return to the Stars sort of expansion has launched. Uh, first, let's talk about where we are. Uh, patch 10.12 ended up in a really good spot. Uh, you can meme me all you want, but the reality is we are quite happy with the meta on live right now. Uh, we're seeing, especially at high elo, that you know even comps that were considered S tier four days ago are falling off. Uh, people are getting countered. Um, so yeah, it's just it's in a good spot. Um, there are two major things out of line right now. Uh, the first one is uh, Battlecast is kind of underpowered. Um, so one of our big goals for this patch is to get Battlecast up to the rest of the stuff going on. Because uh, no one's really playing six battle cast. You run two, four early, but that's about it. Uh, and then the other is Urgot. And Urgot is not overpowered by any means, uh, but there's certainly a lot of frustration around Urgot. Now, the thing with Urgot is we want to make sure we do this right so we're not rushing it. So there will not be Urgot adjustments in this patch. There will be in 1014 is what we're aiming for. Um, you can meme me all you want, but he's not overpowered. Um, he's actually doing just fine to actually a little underpowered. So, um, okay. So with that, let's dive into what is in patch 1013. Okay, first off, we have one new galaxy. The new galaxy that I've been trying to get to show up on my stream all weekend, but we haven't, is called Binary Star. Uh, champions can only equip two items. So you can see here on Ziggs, you have this cross that says, nope, no item. Uh, there are some exceptions or just some things to clarify. Thieves Gloves, Thieves Gloves counts as one item. So you can still put these gloves and get a full thing like this. No problem. Uh, the other thing is the mech. The mech only gets two items still. Same thing. So the mech will always get this, and then it'll get two items. So don't think you can cheat it with the mech. Um, so that's how Binary Star works. We hope this will make you think about your carries a bit more instead of just stacking all three items on the same person. Um, so this should make some interesting options. We'll see how this galaxy goes. And if you're wondering, the galaxy being removed this time is Medium Legends. The 125 HP galaxy is the one that is being removed this patch. It's one of the older ones, and it's one of the ones that we're ready to move on. So, cool. All right, on the trait side, uh, as I mentioned, Battlecast is the one underperforming the most, so it's going to see the biggest numbers here. Uh, so as you can see here, the two-piece goes from 70 to 80. The four-piece goes from 160 to 180. And I'll call out here that this makes the early battle cast quite strong because it was already pretty strong. But then you'll notice the sixth jump is massive. Uh, 325 to 480, uh, big jump. And then 600 to 880, so very large jump. Battle cast should be much more playable after these changes. Um, now again, every other change from here on out, like I said, other than battle cast stuff, is very light touches. Um, so for example, Blade Master. We're seeing six Blade Master be really strong, especially if you hit that three star Yi. So we're bringing the percent chance down 5%. That's it. Uh, blaster. Blaster, what we're noticing is two blasters in a very good spot. It's a good, strong early game comp. Uh, red buff early is like a really good win streak, especially with Cyber, especially with Battle Cast, it'll be even better. But no one's really running four blaster. Uh, so we're making four blaster more of an option again, especially now that Misfortune's gone. Uh, you kind of lack that late end game carry. Um, so we're giving four blaster back its uh, extra the six extra attacks. So if you really want that AOE spread of damage, you can consider four blaster again. Uh, cybernetic. Cybernetic has proven to be one of the most consistent comps. Uh, it's a really good top four comp. It can win if you get the right items. So again, we're just touching it a tiny bit. And so the six piece cybernetic bonus loses five AD. And unlike when we nerf a champion 5 AD, that 5 AD scales on a champion. This is literally just 5 AD. So uh, cybernetic, just a tiny touch. Uh, Darkstar. Darkstar is one of the ones that ended up underperforming a little bit. Darkstar is a comp that you kind of have to wait till the end game to put together. And again, so it's just underperforming just a little bit. Uh, so instead of 8, 16, 24, 32, it now goes 8, 18, 28, 38. Apparently this patch, we have a lot of 8s in our numbers. So uh, Darkstar can do well if you high roll the Xerath, the Jin, get good items. This should help bump it up a bit. Also, people are still sleeping on Shaco a bit. We're seeing some Shaco play at high level, um, but hopefully people realize that Shaco is actually pretty good. So 
Speaking of Shaco, Infiltrator, we're seeing a lot of two Infiltrator. Two Infiltrator might actually be a little overpowered, but we're leaving it alone for now. A lot of two Infiltrators right now. Uh, Fizz especially is getting played a lot, uh, but not much for Infiltrator. So with four Infiltrator, what we're doing is giving it a 10% buff. Again, everything you're going to see is very light touches here. So if you want to go for Infiltrator or maybe you get an Infiltrator spat, it should be a little bit more worth now. So... And then Mystic. Uh, yes, certainly the meme has been the four Vanguard, four Mystic comp is the really strong, reliable comp. And it is. It's strong. Um, but it's not grossly overpowered. And we're seeing it fall out of the meta already. So we wanted to do a very light touch here. And so four Mystic loses five MR. Very, very light touch. And again, that's what you're going to see. You're going to see a lot of light touches because the game is in a good state. We don't want to drastically shift the meta here. Four Vanguard, four Mystic should be a playable comp. It should just not be a guaranteed win, and it's not, so light touches. All right, on the champion side, uh, Alawi is probably one of the bigger changes on the champion side. Um, Alawi was always envisioned as this brawler that's not quite as defensive as a Malphite, but is a little more aggressive in the sense that she steals the defenses. So let's say you're actually playing against a 4 Vanguard 4 Mystic. Alawi should be a good answer to like rip through those defenses. And so what we're doing is making her a little bit tankier, uh, and she gets to steal more defenses. And it lasts a little longer, so it's actually like a thing you should be looking out for. Uh, if you've seen it on my stream, you just can get your Alawi up to like 500 armor, it's pretty cool to see. Um, so yeah, that's nice to see. Uh, Nocturne, same thing. Uh, there's actually only one buff here and one bug fix, if you will. The buff is the attack speed buff. Um, Nocturne... Nocturne's basically really good until stage 3. Um, he's a really good opener, and then he falls off hard. Uh, but so he gets to attack a little bit more. That's great. The damage here, as someone pointed out, is like the damage per second actually went down at 4 star because the damage per second matches the debuff time. So this just cleans that up. This is barely even a buff. It's only a buff to 3 star. So, And then Zaya. Zaya is underperforming a bit. Um... And this is sort of a backtrack on a previous nerf. She started off at 50 mana, then we nerfed her to 70. Uh, now she kind of takes too long to turn on, so we're putting her back down to 60. So, um, so yeah, like I said, lots of light touches here. Uh, on the two-cost side, Darius is a champion that without Cassidy in the meta uh, has proven to kind of not have a spot. And so because he kind of doesn't have a tag... Mono Reaver until level four with their level late levels with Aurelia and Thresh. He gets to be extra strong. So he gets quite a few buffs here. He's gaining some extra armor and magic resist to be a little tankier. And his two star and three star spell damage go to go up a bit. Uh, if you two star a Darius and commit to Darius in your comp, he should be very, very strong. It's very much like Rumble without Mech Pilot. Uh, we want Darius to be like an exciting, good unit that you're willing to run, maybe without even Space Pirate. So. Uh, he gets some slight buffs. Uh, Kogma, same thing. Kogma has been underperforming on the Battlecast side. And I know what you're thinking. Battlecast buff, Alawi buff, Nocturne small buff, Kogma small buff. Isn't Battlecast going to be strong? Yeah. Yeah, Battlecast was kind of that bad. Um, so optimal Battlecast now should be a competitive late game comp. Uh, and so what he does is he gets some extra HP, so he's not quite as fragile. He gets to cast a spell more often. And if you're willing to 3-star Kogma, this thing should tear through high HP targets. So, some small changes there. And again, these are light changes, but the Spellcast one is probably the biggest one here. Uh, Nautilus. Nautilus has proven to be a very good champion. Uh, runs a lot of comps, Astro Sniper, Vanguard Mystic, etc., etc. Plus, just in general, he's a, uh, a Vanguard that probably casts his spell... And his spell is a 3.5 second stun and a 1.75 second stun to everything around that champion. It's a, it's a big spell. So he gets two light touches. Uh, 10 mana off, so he just casts a little less. Maybe you CC him. Um, maybe he doesn't. And the two star stun duration goes down just a little bit. Um, again, it was just a very long stun for a two star unit, two cost unit. So tiny one there. All right, on the three cost side... Uh, Bard, we have significantly reduced his cast time. Uh, right now, if you went like Shojin, Hurricane, whatever, and like made him rapid cast, the problem with Bard was that cast was so slow. Uh, it really just wasn't enjoyable. 
Um, so we upped the cast time a little bit. This is a buff to Bard. Um, he should be a little bit better. And honestly, that's okay. Uh, Cassiopeia. This looks like a buff because big number go up, but it's actually a big nerf. Uh, because what this is, is now instead of 700 damage over 12 seconds, it's 700 damage over 14 seconds, which means her DPS goes down. Um, so Cassiopeia just gets to do a little less damage. We still have this vision of Cassiopeia being the thing that poisons everyone on the enemy team. We still want that to be true. It still is true. It's just less damage and will take longer to burn down. Uh, Jace on the Vanguard side, he got that big 100 HP buff, uh, as well as some stat buffs on PvE. He's proven to be very strong. He's performing really, really well. So we're just toning it down a tiny, tiny bit. So minus 50 HP. And then Master Yi. Uh, it took a while for everyone to realize it, but once they finally did, Master Yi 3 is kind of the best thing in the game right now. Uh, if you hit that 3-star Master Yi, you're very likely to win the game. Not guaranteed, but very likely. Uh, he's just overperforming a little bit for where we want him. So 3-star only gets a slight nerf to his spell damage. That's it. So, and again, what you should be seeing here, the theme should be very light touches. Uh, if you've seen me play any PvE, what you'll notice is 3-star E is still still wrecking fools. So, uh, Fizz. Fizz has emerged as this really cool sleeper infiltrator that blows up backlines. It's really awesome, really fun to see. Uh, he's just a little too guaranteed, so we're just making him auto-attack one more time. Not a big deal. So, tiny nerf to Fizz. Uh, Nar. The, there is actually, this is actually more of a nerf, but let's be clear here. N three star Nar was underperforming quite a bit. We didn't like where three star Nar was. He was kind of one of the worst four cost three stars. So he gains a bunch more health and a bunch more AD on transform. Sweet. Uh, 4,000 health on transform. Nar three should be scary. I kind of like, I love the idea of like Nar three versus the mech and they both have 5,000 health and they're both beating up on each other. Should be hilarious. Uh, but... Nar 2 and Nar 1, on the other hand, though, little powerful, little powerful. So we dropped the stun duration from 2 seconds to 1.5 seconds. What this means, though, is you still get the knockback time plus the stun, so it's still almost about a 2-second stun. Um, still think Nar will be good, just a little less good. Uh, Jinx, this, this nerf is massive. Jinx is completely unplayable now. Uh, just kidding. It is a whole, t like, once she turns on and starts, you know, powering up, her attacks, bonus attack speed goes down 10% and 5%. Woo! So just a light touch to Jinx to make her just a little bit, a little bit worse. Uh, with all of these adjustments, uh, especially to Vanguard Mystic, and what we're already seeing on live is Sorcerers are doing really well, especially at high elo. Uh, sorcerers use Riven as kind of their big front line. And so we're just pulling Sorcerer down a little bit with this Riven nerf. So it's a 25 off her shield. That's it. Um, so she's just a little less tanky. No big deal. And then finally, Teemo. Uh, Teemo gets a small nerf in his slow duration. That four second slow duration. Oh my god. Just going so slow. Uh, it was a little too much, uh, so we brought that down to three seconds. And then three-star Teemo was actually the best-performing three-star forecast by a pretty good margin. So we brought three-star Teemo down quite a bit, actually. Um, I think this number might be 550. I could be wrong. I'd have to double-check. But uh, So three-star Teemo, just a little less of a free win. That's all. Uh, finally, on the five-cost side, uh, two-star Echo was overperforming a little bit. Um, so we just brought down his bonus spell damage. Keep in mind, this is just the bonus spell damage. His auto attack still hits hard. He's still doing the, uh, the slow. So he's still a good champion. Just a very light touch to two-star echo. And then Thresh. Uh, Thresh is an interesting one. Thresh is probably the best end game champion in the game right now. Um, because again, like the fact that he creates so many more extra bodies especially when you're running something slower like the four Vanguard, four Mystic. Um, it just makes so many extra bodies. And then obviously the one people are going to talk about is the Thresh pull into Urgot, uh, which is can be very strong, especially if that Urgot hits the right target. 
Um, so what we're doing is making Thresh just a little bit not as good at the end game. He still should be one of the better end game comps, but he's not going to rapid cast quite as much as he was. And he won't, like, a blue buff Thresh was insta-casting before. That won't happen as much. And again, we're doing light touches here. So, cool. And again, I will reiterate that Urgot, we are aiming for 1014 changes. But if your expectation is that Urgot won't one-shot things, you're going to be sorely disappointed. Urgot will one-shot things. That's what he's there for. Urgot was designed to be the outlet for the three-star tankies in Zhao that, hey, I need to deal with this. Grab an Urgot. We just need to make sure it's done in a fair way and that it feels fair. Right now it doesn't. We agree. We're working on it. Okay, item changes. Uh, Bloodthirster and Hextech Gunblade. Let's be clear. Uh, these items are just underperforming. And after these changes, they probably will still be underperforming. Um, but we're just trying to make them a little more optimal. So if you want to build them, if you want to put these on there, cool. Great. Uh, Jeweled Gauntlet, same thing. Um, just a little bit underperforming for where we liked it. So we're giving it a small buff. Um, now the nice thing about Jeweled Gauntlet here is now Jeweled Gauntlet plus IE is now 50% uh, critical damage, which means your crits do double damage. It's a nice round number. So I really like how that ended up. Uh, Static Shiv gets a small buff. If I'm being honest, I still think Static Shiv won't be that played after this change. But like I said, we're trying not to overdo it. Uh, especially with the battle cast changes, I would hate for like Shiv Kogma to become the new meta. Um, but especially with all the Mystics, I'm less convinced. But again, Shiv is underperforming. Slight buff. We're trying to do light touches. Because again, the meta's in a good spot. Uh, and then probably the biggest item buff. Shout out to Lobby 2 because they helped me with this one. Uh, but Zerat Portal. Uh, Zerat Portal is a really cool item. It's in a good spot. Uh, it's supposed to be a I need more frontline. If you were watching my stream today, you saw me use this on Shen, which was great. Um, but it has this really awkward thing of like, hey, I have a one star frontline and I need extra tanking this. So I put a Zerat Portal, but the one star is really weak too. That feels bad. So what we did is we shifted up the one star version quite a bit, the two star a little, and the three star not at all. So the item should just be more generally useful um, as a good item. So that's pretty cool. Uh, lastly, okay, there's two big system changes we need to talk about. The first one is we've raised the minimum number of items that you can get in a game by one. Uh, if you listen to challenger players, if you've ever heard them bitch about the 11 item drop, well, there's no more 11 items. It's 12. 12 is the minimum. Um, it does not affect the maximum. It does not affect anything else. It just means you can never get 11. The other big one is, and I really hate this change, but we had to do it. It's the right call to do it, uh, is that because there are people that like to exploit the system and do terrible, terrible things, uh, we had to make this change for competitive integrity at the top of the ladder. And so if you are ranked master or above, you may only solo queue in ranked. Uh, we were seeing too many people uh, queue up with two friends and grief everyone in the lobby and make sure that one person was more likely to win. Uh, they're douchebags for doing it, but it is what it is. So, and like I said, for the innocent people who are queuing up as two people and playing legit, I'm sorry, but it's the right change. Um, finally, some bug fixes, uh, some tooltips got cleaned up. Great. Malphite's energy shield now benefits from chalice of power. I know everyone was running those chalice Malphite comps. So this, this buffs those. Uh, Space Pirates were sometimes getting an additional coin with Giant Slayer. Uh, sorry, Skara, we fixed that bug. Uh, fixed an issue where Kogma's attacks during Barrage could rarely become Trap Claw procs. If you've ever seen that video, it's really funny. It's just like Kogma shooting uh, stuns. <laughs> it's pretty pretty funny. Uh, remove the unintended orange glow that would play on melee weapons of units equipped with Infinity Edge. If you ever saw that little orange triangle, fixed. And then finally, fixed an issue where Zephyr units could sometimes be hit by certain AoE spells like Teemo's Satellite Trap. So now your Zephyr units won't take a bunch of damage. So, cool. That is all the changes. Uh, nothing. This is probably what's going to ship. Um, I know sometimes there's risk where like things might change, but the odds of anything changing right now are pretty slim. So this is probably the patch. Um, honestly, playing PB so far, it seems pretty good. And again, the expectation of the results of this patch are... Everything that was working is still working. It should be a little more fair. There should be a few more things working, like Battlecast. Um, 
and yeah, the game should just end up being, you know, even slightly more fair. That is the goal of this patch, which is why, again, you're seeing lots and lots of very tiny nickel and dime changes. So, all right, that is going to do it for the patch 10.13 rundown. Hope you're excited. Hope you're having fun. Uh, if you have any questions, as always, hit us up. And on behalf of the whole team, thank you everybody for playing. Take it easy.